You're listening to Actors Endurance, a podcast that inspires actors to never give up on their passion and find ways to continue to grow within the entertainment industry. My name is Shanette Wilson, and I'm an actress, and my co-host is Marlon Hargrave, and he is a teaching artist. And together, we are Actors Endurance. going on everybody welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast actors endurance with the dopest hosts in the game your girl Shanette Wilson and what what, what your name is my name is BM Marlon Hargrave and that's the great Marlon Hargrave don't get it twisted (laughs) I know that's right Y'all, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. We've been noticing our views are going up, and our subscribers are going up, so we appreciate you guys supporting the page, supporting the channel. So just take a second real now. Go ahead and like the video. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Come on. And uh, thank you for supporting. We appreciate it. Now, let's get right into it. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry and AI. Tyler Perry, AI. Yeah, they seem to be synonymous nowadays, at least over the past couple of days. Yes, yes, yes. My partner here sent me an article. If you guys haven't seen the article yet, uh, man, it says a uh, billionaire filmmaker Tyler Perry discusses open AI Sora's impact on Hollywood. Y'all. <sighs> this is getting interesting. This is crazy. We already went through the strikes, writers and the actors. And now we have this new contract, which expires, what, in 2026? But we I'm have. Yeah, from, it expires in 2026, the new contract from SAG AFTRA. But we have two years now with this new contract and this open AI and all this. Thank God they haven't rolled out Sora yet. There's no, there's still no date, right, Marlon? Not that I know of, but the big boys are already using Sora. And if you guys haven't heard what Sora is from OpenAI, it's basically a replacement for everybody. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but it is. I mean, you know, being in the AI space a little bit, you can kind of see where we're we are not as important to making a film as we used to be. And AI is definitely, or or this Sora, it's definitely going to, it's gonna change the way that the business is done. There's no real kind of, I don't know, there's no real, there's no real soft way to say it, man. We need to be looking out for our jobs right now. We really do. Yeah. I, I don't even know how to explain it. And, and the article will explain it more. I believe that was the, the Hollywood Reporter. I, well, it's been it's been going crazy. Yes, that was a Hollywood Reporter. It's in The Observer. It's in a lot of these different publications now, um, either under entertainment or business. Because AI, even though it hasn't rolled out to the common regular uh, people, like he said, all the big people, you know, all the big wigs, you know, the people in the know, like, the billionaire himself, he has access to it. So I'm sure other people have access to it and they're already using it, which is yes. amazing. Tyler's Tyler already used it. And I guess before we go into his use of it, for guys who don't, for you guys who don't know what the Sora is, basically they can make a movie from, you can make a whole movie from your computer. You don't need any cast. You won't need any makeup. You won't need, you know, maybe some technical people. You really don't even need editing. All of that stuff is built within the system. So, and we're just talking about regular AI with uh, the prompts and the the way that the prompts are being used. Basically, you're just having a conversation with your computer and the computer will pump out a movie. And it's not quite that simple. You know, if you if you've used Runway or if you if you've used uh, Mid Journey or Leonardo or something like that, to kind of understand where the system is going. But basically, I, I again I'm at a loss of words, so I guess I'll let the article speak. But uh, we need to we need to figure this one out, actors. Uh, we will endure, but we need to figure this one out. 
and listen, we always endure now. We always endure no matter what. However, it's time to really get ahead. Don't be reactive, be proactive. It's time to get ahead of the game, stay in the know. These are the most crucial moments of the business right now. Every single day, things are changing, upgrading. So if you don't know what's going on and you're not adapting and preparing yourself for the future, you're going to wake up one day and you'll be in a whole new world. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're already there. <laughs> we're already there in a whole new world. They wrote a book about it. Go read it. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Tyler Perry was, he was putting 800, 800 million dollars, close to a billion dollars. He was putting 800 million dollars back into his studio here in Atlanta. He, pro, uh, he uh, halted production indefinitely because what he was going to do, he was going to uh, expand his production company and, you know, build more sound stages, things like that. But once he was exposed to this open AI Sora, he said, oh, there's no need to do that. And he said, he said he had gotten, these are his words now. He said, I had gotten word over the last year that this was coming, but I had no idea until I saw recently the demonstrations of what it was able to do. And it's shocking to me. So in the next two films that Tyler Perry is making, he'll be using AI. So if because right now, I believe the only thing he said he used it for was like to age himself or to create different scenarios, different backgrounds, things like that. So, I mean, we shall see. I'm curious, you know, when I, I'm sure I'll have to go see the film and, um, <laughs> you know, just to see if I can tell what is, you know, because if you, if you guys remember, you remember Gemini Man, you could tell, even though it was really good, that was a long time ago, but Gemini Man was did a really great job of recreating a younger Will Smith. Everything from the movements, you know, characteristics, but everything. Did a really great job. Open AI Sora is better than that. So. Yes. Uh, and, just, um, go ahead. Oh, oh, I was going to say, we actually got into the contract a little bit. There is a section in there in, in the agreement where if you have a digital version of yourself and if you're acting along with your digital version, you only get paid for one likeness. You know, so it's not even like you're getting paid for, for uh, yourself and your likeness. You're only going to get paid for yourself. And they can take and do whatever they want with the digital representation of you. Of course, you would have to give them consent because it is you. So Will Smith, if, if this were right now and they were making a movie, they would only pay him for, you know, the performance that he did. And any other scene where his AI was used, he doesn't get paid for that. Yeah, we're definitely going to dive into that. And you guys, please, all you professionals out there, even if you're not in the entertainment business, whatever business you're in, go to your HR and just read all the rules and regulations so you know what's going on. But all you performers out there, entertainers, please pull up the SAG contract. Go to sag After, pull it up. If not, just go online, Google it so you understand what is going on and you can read everything. We're going to go into it. We're going to touch a little bit on it. We don't have a whole lot of time. But we're gonna touch a little bit on it, uh, and then just to finish up with this Tyler Perry thing again, he's he halted the eight hundred million dollar expansion of his studios, and that is permanently. I'm not sure where he's going to take that money and put it, but he said he's pocket people. Yeah, I mean he feels better in his pocket. <laughs> now you know what he's gonna do. He's gonna get more technology. You know, he get better computers <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. He's gonna get all the tools that he needs to use this AI, open, open, open AI Sora. Now, the, the worst part is not only are the actors and the hair and makeup, the, 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 the set dressers, lighting, uh, a lot of people in the business are gonna lose money, but also you didn't even think about like the contractors, whoever was contracted to build that $800 million project. Can you imagine? That's a lot of people and they were looking for, they had been planning this for a long time. And this just unexpectedly, he halted production on it. So that's a, there's a lot of people in Georgia right now and maybe in other places if he outsourced that are losing a lot of money just because of AI. So guys, it's, it's hitting everybody. And um, let me see, what else, what else, what else? 
Yeah, I think the crazy part is he doesn't really seem like just from the article and based off of what he said, he's interested in using it to his advantage for his, you know, personal gain. He doesn't seem too concerned about everybody else losing money, nor did he say he would pay people, you know, to compensate them for some of the money that they would lose because they're there less time, if they're there at all. <laughs> so yeah. these people don't care about you. What did Michael Jackson say? They don't really care about us. Remember, Ow. so this is a great time to, you got to pivot. You have to pivot. Um, yeah, let's get into the contract, Marlon. Let's get into some of these details, some of the details of the AI SAG, the AI portion of the SAG after contract. We're going to give you guys a little bit of uh, details, but listen, y'all do your homework, please. Yeah. Yes, and this is from Backstage, and this, uh, they went through a, a, an article trying to break down and going with the new jargon because the AI in this digital space is a little bit newer. So digital alteration, this refers to the practice of changing an actor's work in photography or soundtrack previously recorded by the performer. So Basically, uh, well, I, actually, it goes on to say your explicit consent is required to make these alterations unless they're substantial, unless they're substantial, I'll talk English, substantially <laughs> as scripted, performed, and or recorded. So it also says that your consent isn't required for your lips, body, or voice as they are adjusted for redubbing and post-production edits explicitly made for purposes of cosmetic, your wardrobe, noise, redu noise reduction, timing, speed, continuity, pitch, tone, and it goes on with a, a long list of other things. So basically, your, your, your consent is required for if they used exactly you, like if they used me or if they used you, Shanet, then they do have to get the consent. But honestly, if you can generate your own character, you don't really need an actor. But if I wanted to do something where I kind of wanted your type, which you know a lot of casting people used to use, it like if uh, if a Denzel couldn't do a role or he rejected the role, they would get someone of his likeness. But now, if they don't want Denzel or they can't afford Denzel, then they can have a Denzel-like character. Yeah. Actually, maybe even some of his mannerisms and everything, but as long as it's not an exact replica of Denzel, they can do whatever they want. They can alter your lips. They can make they can make it look like Denzel's first cousin. You know? Have you seen and, videos like that? I've seen videos and pictures like that of people where they just make some small adjustment. Like, if it was me, then my forehead would be smaller, thicker eyebrows, thicker lips, and maybe a little skinny nose or something like that, but it's still me but not really but not really yeah as long as it's not really you yeah. then you don't have any say so so uh, i believe that what's going to happen is and disney's already done it disney's generated characters they've already had characters that aren't that don't live in real life and we've done it cgi has been out for a long time you know, so it's really nothing new. You saw what they did with the Transformers and what they've been able to do with the superhero movies so far. So uh, this is kind of the nail in the coffin now because not only are we eliminating a lot of actors, but again, the MUAs, set designers, you know, uh, all of those other artists that are involved won't, you know, will have to pivot as well or go to live shows or live performances. You know what I just thought of? I just had an aha moment. I said, wow, the first person, that, the first like uh, set of jobs, I believe that will probably be lost are locations. Yes, yes. <clears throat> be a yeah, locations go got gone. Yeah, location is done. Well, you can, well, you can be a location scout. Actually, you can be a location scout. If they're looking for something specific and you know AI, then you can bring up the scenery exactly the way that they need to because you still 
have to know how to do the prompts. You really have to know how to manipulate the prompts so that you can get what you want in an efficient manner. You know, if you've ever used them, they give you, oh, but what's that? But you don't need a locations expert for that though. So you don't need them to do that. You can get anybody to learn the prompts. You don't necessarily need a uh, location person. Cause I'm trying to think like, what do they do then? Well, the, the location, uh, they would, if I were doing uh, lo location scouting, it would be, if they told me what they were looking for, I could go in and do a prompt, but it, it would take a different kind of artist. Like uh, if you're looking at it traditionally, yes, mm -hmm. that person may be gone, but another person may come in. Uh, like maybe I don't know about the uh, about the Alps, let's say. Let, let, let's say some mountain scenes that I don't know the intricacies of. As a director, I may just say, hey, give me a mountainous scene with snow or something like that. A location scout, a digital location scout, probably is what it'd be called. Um, now I can come in and say, okay, in this area, they're going to have pine trees. In this area, it's going to be this kind of snow. It's going to be this kind of terrain. So I'll be able to get in there and be a little more specific as if I'm scouting that location. But I would throw little nuances in there that would make it um, that would make it a little bit more realistic for that environment. So a digital location scout will probably have to be a master prompter and be very specific in, in uh, giving a prompt to create the environment that's needed. Okay, because I'm thinking everything you described, doesn't that sound like an art person? Uh, well, yes and no. Yes and no, because let's say that an so art, let's say your art department. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Doesn't that sound like, like, if you take away learning the prompts, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the art person would really, like, I'm thinking they would be the one to, like, you know, decorate and, you know, like, mm -hmm. fill in the background. Because I am I really don't see a, a, a use for a locations person. Well, well, in, in the traditional I don't, know, I don't know why I'm stuck on that, but <laughs> but I think because, what is, we're, we're talking about AI, y'all, and I'm thinking, okay, well, who's going to lose their job first? Who's going to have a piece of a job and who's going to just, who's going to be non-existent, who's going to be somewhat useful and who's still going to be, you know, continue to, you know, thrive through this next uh, transition of the entertainment. And that's why I thought of like, I feel like producers, uh, you know, they're set. Actors are gonna be, mm, and but you know, hair, makeup, they're still gonna be useful a little bit, you know, uh, wardrobe a little bit. But I just feel like locations is done, so. Yeah. Well, wardrobe to a certain extent. I mean, I and and actually, you you really brought up a good point. I think that we are gonna see more visual artists, and you know what, graphic designers will probably be the new location scouts, so to speak, because those are the people who can actually not only, uh, be, because, you know, I don't know what Sora is going to do, but the other AI needs help. You know, you'll be able to throw in some prompts or whatever, but for the most part, you still need to know a little bit of Blender. You may need to know a little bit of Mocha, a little bit of um, Adobe Photoshop to actually make it really be crisp and really realistic. <clears throat> so that there'll probably be outside tools and and they are the ones who are making the best videos right now in the AI space. It's not AI directors or it's not the, the, the traditional directors. These are people who they've made a pivot from being in Adobe or something like that or being a graphic artist to now being a graphic film artist or an AI film artist. So um, I think that what we're going to see is a lot of people pivoting from one skill set and just going to another. But if you are in it traditionally, you're probably going to have to uh, find something else. I mean, if you're MUA, all they have to do with this new thing now, that's even if they use you. But if they decide to use you, you're only going to get one session. You're only going to get one makeup. Even if your wardrobe, you'll probably get a fitting the actor, you know, they may fit an actor in something, but if I'm wardrobe or if I'm a digital wardrobe person, 
then where would I necessarily need to have a real wardrobe person? Yeah, and I only think the wardrobe only because they have, uh, you know, all wardrobe specialists, they're real creative. They know what kind of colors, tones, you know, things like that to like pair together. So I think just, you know, their ideas and, you know, their creativity, I think they will still be, like I said, somewhat useful, but not, you know, just in like the idea, you know, because it's almost like, you know, playing a video game and you're dressing your character. So they probably have to do, you know, stuff like that to fit the the scenery but yeah everything like you said to be digital so y'all listen if you really want to pivot you might want to learn how to edit graphic design <laughs> get into that field you know and learn these ai prompts because obviously i mean that's it. Not holding it out now and i probably don't think it's going to be this year i think since they're introducing sora i think next year it's probably going to come out it, it will be, it, it'll come out before the SAG contract, SAG after contract is over. It, it, it will come out. And I'm just saying now you should probably brace yourself because after 2026, the industry may not like everything that we're talking about now will probably be in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back on Tyler Perry, uh, he says that he hasn't used AI. I truly believe, and it, it, it's just me, I believe he used ChatGPT, you know, when he wrote all of those episodes, he wrote whole seasons in three weeks. I know writers that that's not easy to do. And you're saying that you locked it. He said he went up to the mountains. Do you remember this? He yeah. said he went up to the mountains or something like that. And he just wrote, wrote, wrote. Uh, this was back, I believe it was, it was 2020 or 2021 where he shut his studio down and had everybody come in for three weeks or something like that and they just recorded the shows yeah. but he bragged about not having a writing room i remember all of that so and this was years before they introduced chat gpt uh -huh. so i'm i'm just going to say that i would bet on the fact that he's already used it and now that he can use it in his new movie he can say well i'm just now using it or i'm just now aware of it but you know, you're not that high up in the business just figuring stuff out. That that's not how that works. He he knew a while back. The other studios know as well. And, and I, I'm gonna give a shout out to Tyler, whether he knew about it or not. He's the only one that I've seen actually try to warn us that it's coming. I haven't heard anything from any other studio saying, "Hey, you know, come a couple of years, um, your job will be obsolete." So shout out to Tyler for that. But if you read the Hollywood Reporter article and any other article, he said, basically, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of my business. And I am afraid that y'all ain't going to have a job. <laughs> that's me paraphrasing, but exactly. <laughs> basically that's what he was saying. So, yeah. you know, well, well, how, do, how does this change? I mean, you know, I've been more on the teaching side of it. So that excludes me. You know, I, I may be, as a teacher of acting, yeah. maybe I could go in and say, all right, well, uh, maybe I can help them emotionally uh, uh, do emotional tracking, you know, yeah. Yeah. emotional intelligence of the characters that they're producing. But that takes me out of a job myself. You know, how, how does that affect you as an actress? Uh, I would say you still have the voice, but uh, me as an actor, I'm... I'm not going to tell everybody what I'm doing, but uh, i keep my business to myself. Y'all take note from me. Don't tell everybody what you're doing. Keep some things to yourself. He knows, but y'all don't know. You will see it. I ain't going to tell you nothing. But I would just say I'm doing my best to stay ahead of the game and, you know, just reading articles, talking to people, and trying to figure out in my own way what can I do to sustain myself for the long haul? Because I don't believe in retirement. I'm doing this forever. I'm going to be a Betty White. You know what I mean? No kids, just my career. Okay. And I'm just do this and then that's it. I'm done. You know? And I'm happy. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but yeah, so that's what I've been, um, you know, just figuring out different ways to sustain myself through, you know, acting. But I, one, one tip I will give you guys is, uh, Think about how big video games are when people are 
you know, playing video games and they're getting paid to play video games on teams. They'll put them up in houses and, and things like that. So that's one great way to sustain yourself, not playing video games, y'all lazy mofos, the voices. So <laughs> your voice actors, <laughs> you know, so um, if I was, if I were you guys, I would, you know, start taking some voice classes. That's what I'm doing. Take some voice classes. Voice acting is always great. Outside of that, I would say learn how to edit. Learn how to edit and learn how to use these chat GPT prompts. Learn how to use these chat GPT prompts. You know, uh, play around with Mid Journey and Leonardo and Skylar and, you know, play around with these tools and, and you know, learn. Well, I, I'll give you a tool. And, and to be honest with you, um, unfortunately, they're over into the voiceover side too. The Eleven Labs is killing it right now. The voice cloning, they can clone your voice within three seconds now. Mm -hmm. that and is if you speak, that's crazy because it used to take, uh, when it first came out, you had to speak into it for like 10 minutes. You had to do like this long kind of dialogue so that it could capture your tone, your pitch, your, your speed, you know, how you speak. And now they don't really need that. They can capture your tone pretty quickly. And if you give them two or three sentences, they'll be able to clone your entire voice. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, I went through 11 Labs a couple of days ago, and they have these very generic voices, but you can also generate your own voices. So uh, I don't know, it, every aspect of our business is being hit by AI. So uh, I, I think that you can take voice lessons um, yeah. But I don't know. And, and I don't know what the gaming industry is doing right now. So I won't speak on it so much about the gaming industry, but I can imagine that they've shifted over to the AI as well. So we, we have to be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I say y'all learn how to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> learn how to edit. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and what's wild about this is that nowadays, for the most part, you, you I, I would say go get a premiere or something like that, but by 2026, with the way the cap cut and these kind of other ones are going, they there may not be a need, there may not be a need for a complicated editing. Like um, well, I won't say complicated editing, but the interface is very user friendly. It really is. You just go there, to, you know, after a day or two you can really navigate through a simpler system. So I wouldn't say learn how to do that, but also incorporate the AI tools because what's going to be accepted is more of what, when AI can speak to, to itself or other AI agents or whatever that is, the better off or the smoother the production will go. So unfortunately, and this is universal, we feed AI with the prompts. Mm -hmm. And if you're not using prompts, then the AI is not going to be able to talk to each other and it may not accept a different format within the next few years. So uh, definitely start to get over into the space and understand how it works. And now time out because AI can speak to each other. They did this. Yes. Well, they, yeah, they set off one, set off one. They ended up syncing up and talking to each other and learning from each other and growing like that. I said, oh, no. So y'all just, yep. just stay up to date. Um, but let's get back to, um, let's get back to this SAG after. What was another, let's give the people one more, because, you know, y'all, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Mm -hmm. Plus, do your own research. Uh, so let's give them another, another little, uh, little tidbit from this SAG after contract. How about these, uh, what are synthetic performers? Can you explain to them what a synthetic performer is and, or did you go through that one yet? I don't think you went through that no, one. No, no. Uh, according to the article in Backstage, these are entirely AI generated actors and actors is in quotes. <laughs> who are presented as real people according to the agreement. Okay, the, uh, they, well, they can't be recognized as an identifiable natural actor. So, and that is in quotes as well, recognizable as an identifiable natural performer. Um, 
I guess because it's not where it's not birthed. I don't know, <laughs> you know, because it's AI generated, then of course uh, they don't have any liability for that. Yeah, and I guess it's like that they just you know create just you know random people, but not necessarily you know like say they didn't want to get your consent and they didn't want to pay you they just create a you know a real human being that doesn't look like anybody you know and um now they well, start- well, it does it does say that producers can derive certain body parts like your eyes or your mouth from real actors to create a kind of frankenstein monster as as they put it but that requires explicit consent from the people in question. So you may be able to use that, but like, you know, if I take my lips and just alter it a little bit, then I wouldn't need consent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why, what, is, what, uh, what else are they saying? Yeah, well, you know, they say the whole thing is um, when it comes to AI, they're all operating in good faith. I see that word coming up a lot within the contract. Yes. Faith and good faith. What did I tell you? What did Michael Jackson say? Remember that. So I don't, I don't know about the good faith. Um, what I do know is it's all about the money. That's all anyone cares yep. about. So people focus on your money. Yep. Keep, yep. Keep as much of it as possible and just stay up to date with this, these new changes. Uh, please read the SAG after contract. Oh, my goodness. So AI does have a silver lining. It does have a use case, of course. However, um, it's it's impeding on how we make a living. And that's what's a little scary, but a little exciting, too, because, you know, if you get into the space and you decide that you want to be, you want to do something within the space, then you may have to uh, rely on your technical skills more than your ability to perform. And get into live performances, put together live plays, put together live, you know, live performances because AI can't quite replicate that just yet. You know, so if you're a film actor, Mm -hmm. I would employ you to get some stage skills. Yes. That, That would be me. And you know, I didn't think about this until I was reading a little bit of the a little bit more of the article if you scroll down like towards the end of this backstage article uh somebody mentioned in here that uh they were like yeah if you you really this is uh going back excuse me people just to give you a little context before you know everyone agreed to the new sag after contract someone uh someone mentioned that you might as well be uh hold on wait no give me one second i lost it i lost it they were talking about uh they they said uh actors should only endorse the deal, which we already did. Well, y'all did anyway, I did. If if they don't want to work anymore and they express concerns over how the issue will affect other areas of filmmaking, because no one's thinking about the synthetic performances could lead to, you know, obviously the fewer sets, fewer crew, uh drivers, the list goes on, but also like who's um they're like the AI objects that don't, they don't pay dues, they don't pay pension, the health. So it's like everything is restructured because SAG relies on that. It's a SAG after project with no SAG after it. Where's all y'all? We're just going and, deeper down the rabbit holes, I'll say. Yeah, and, and we're definitely just going to have to come back on this because we don't have the time, guys. But you mentioned the the location scouts. What about the PAs? Oh, wouldn't you wouldn't need PAs? You wouldn't need uh, craft crafty anymore. You know, you don't. I mean, a few people that are just coming in feed themselves. Uh, you know, you wouldn't need your best boys. You wouldn't need you know, any any of that crew anymore. The lighting is actually in the program. So your whole lighting crew is gone. Your DP, maybe. Right. And actually, you know what? We're, we're going to come back to this. We're going to we're going to do an episode about uh, what positions are actually affected. Like you know, and we'll just go down a production list. 
look at which positions we will look above the line and below the line, and then we'll see what's necessary or, or what will possibly be replaced. So yeah. yeah, unfortunately, this is way too deep for us to, to get in for one session. Yeah, it's a lot, y'all. It's a lot. But remember years ago when the music business changed and they got rid of all that when streaming came about, it was a big reset. And just like you mentioned, losing PAs, they the music business lost um, artist development, you know? So there was no artist development. Just like the PA position, that's pretty much like a development because when you're a PA, you learn all the basics things, you know, on set. And then, you know, you kind of graduate your way up and move on to different things. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting how uh, everything is moving, but we're staying on it. Y'all need to stay on it, too. And uh, you got anything else for the people before we get up out of here? No, no, nothing more than, uh, you know, stay, try to stay ahead of this and try not to be so mad at AI. I know that, that it will be a little frustrating going forward, but try to protect yourself as much, learn as much as you can, and uh, maybe start to think about your acting skills and how it apply, how it or your skills would apply in a regular nine to five world or maybe even uh your own business or get into live performances because i do believe or well, actually now i will say this i think tv will survive right now mm. i think tv oh. but as far as movies are concerned probably not but tv probably a couple of more years before that's uh really affected yeah i didn't think about that because t- television is different i think television has Television has some uh has some longevity, I think, for sure. Um uh, I, longevity meaning only about four more years. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, you do a I don't think in the last <laughs> Yeah. I don't think in the last past twenty twenty eight, to be honest with you. I think by then we'll start to see the AI significantly uh be a part of the way that people make their T V shows as well even books and all of that. So, uh, but, but film, it, the film side of it, I think is the one where we're going to see the most change first. Yes. Yes. And I think it'd be kind of cool if, uh, since movies are changing so much, people start, you know, you go to the movie theater and you can watch, I don't know, three episodes of a television show. (laughs) <laughs> that would be interesting uh, yeah. <laughs> well, watch the, one movie, you know you just go there and watch three episodes of a TV show in the theater <laughs> I don't know just me thinking yeah they, they may have to repurpose all of those theaters and that, that, that that's what we're seeing nowadays too is that a lot of buildings are being repurposed you know uh, in a lot of downtown areas the office buildings were empty for years actually so now they're repurposing the office buildings, but by 2030, we'll start to see theaters be repurposed. Because I mean, you know, you can almost you can have an uh, a, an LED, not even a screen, like they're panels, and you can line a panel up all through your wall like a volume, like a, a mini version of a volume. Mm-hmm. You can have that in your living room now. So, you know, uh, the and it costs a lot to go see movies. Yeah. So a lot of people are just having their home, you know, little movie parties at their home. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but that's another story, guys. You know, that <laughs> I, 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 I had heard about fifty years ago. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ending it. Done, done. We'll All right. Y'all next uh, yeah, we love y'all. And um, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Check out our le- our latest episodes. And if you want to see anybody on the show, any special guests, please, you know, le- leave us a message and, you know, we'll, we'll reach out to them and bring them up on the show. And uh, until next time, y'all, act as adorance. We are out of here.